Okay, hello guys and welcome back to Chris Flies Planes. Chris here, of course, and today we are flying the beautiful French Mirage 2000C. This D, uh, the C standing for Chasseur, meaning fighter in French. And this plane is an absolute beauty. Have a look at this. Just lovely delta wing design. Real stunning plane. And let's jump into the cockpit. So you'll see straight away here that this is a very complex cockpit. If I just get zoom level in here, all of these switches, they all work, of course. And today we are going to do a little bit of a startup tutorial and just talk through a couple of the systems in the plane just to get everyone familiar. Uh, before I start, I just want to do a quick shout out to Chuck's Guide. If you guys don't know about Chuck's Guide for DCS, it's a, uh, I assume a guy called Chuck, maybe? who does these incredible like third-party guides to all the planes in DCS, and they are invaluable to learn how to play. But nonetheless, if you don't want to read, if you want to watch a video, by all means, hopefully I can help teach you guys how to start this plane, and also a little bit about some of the systems involved as well as we go. So we are currently cold and dark, and if we just jump outside the plane again and have a look, uh, we are uh, in... DCS 2.0, the alpha version. You can play this, of course, in DCS 1.5, but I'm playing it in Nevada because it's just a beautiful map. And we are in Groom Lake Air Force Base, which is just uh, kind of northwesty from Vegas. But anyway, let's jump in and let's get going. So, as I said, we are cold and dark. Uh, you see the cockpit here, our canopy is open, and we're going to jump right into the pre flight checks. So the first thing we are going to look at is the fly-by-wire settings here. Um, the fly-by-wire, very simply, is the system which acts between the pilot controls and the, the control surfaces and the engine, like the flaps and everything. It basically means um, it's a lot harder to fuck up this plane. You can't spin it as easily. So we're just going to go through very quickly and make sure these are set all right. So the first switch is here, which is the FBW fly-by-wire game mode switch. This wants to be set to normal, so that is not normal, that is normal, and then guarded, of course. We then have the fly-by-wire G limiter switch, which is just to the right here. Um, this actually is as required, and what it means is at the top you have the AA mode, which is anti-air missions. This is used for a light payload, and it basically means we have as much motion as the plane will let us have, which is quite important, of course, for air-to-air. -air. If you go down, it is on air to ground mode or charges mode, which is for bombing missions. And it just basically means when we have a heavy payload, the plane won't be as maneuverable and won't let us try and maneuver as much and damage the airframe. For today, we're going to leave it in AA mode because I'm not doing any air to air missions. Uh, sorry, air to ground missions. Finally, we have the um, fly by wire switch up here set to norm or vril. Um, I'm not sure what Vril means in French, but basically it means normal, or this will allow us to spin, so you can put it in a flat spin. I'm not sure why you'd ever want that, but nonetheless. We are then going to go down here to these three switches here, which is Pels, Bores, and Bex. I'm not 100% sure what these do yet. I haven't quite read into that, um, but I know they need to be on auto, so auto, auto, and auto. Uh, then we're going to turn our two radios on. So let me just zoom in here. Uh, so this plane, obviously, as you may be starting to realize, is in French. Uh, so on is M, M meaning marsh, which is on. So switch that one on, and that one is on already. Okay. So next up, we have the parachute hook lever. So this plane does have a parachute system for when you land to slow you down. This is the parachute lever. This wants to be forward um, because you don't want to activate your drag chute before you take off. Next, we are going to set the throttle to the stop position. So currently my throttle is in the stop position because if I move it forwards and back, it's now limited. So we're going to hit this little red button here and it put it in stop position. And then auxiliary altitude indicator should be uncaged, which is here. So we're just going to click that button there so it pops out. Parking brake should be engaged, which is up. So this is just to the right of the seat, like you would find in a car. And that should be up for engaged. Bingo selector. So this is up here. You see this little wheelie thing here. 
Um, this is bingo fuel, so the point at which your plane will tell you bingo fuel, i.e. fuel is only amount left to return to base. This is typically between 1,000 and 1,200 kilograms, so we're going to leave it at 1,200 today. That is absolutely fine, but you can change that if need be. Okie koki. Next, we're going to lower the canopy. So let's just get zoomed out to normal zoom here. So to lower the canopy, we have this lever down to the right-hand side of the cockpit here. We're going to right-click this once. And it's going to close the canopy down to this mode where you see if I jump outside the plane here and zoom in because we seem to be zooming up space. It's kind of almost closed the canopy. So we then need to click this yellow and black switch here to close the canopy the rest of the way. And finally, left click this to lock and seal. That is done. Okay, that is the pre-flight checks. We are now going to move into the startup procedure. So you can see above the caution lights here, there are some switches. Battery on. So M means on. And then all of these should be on as well. They are when you kind of start by default, but do check. So it's just your uh, electrical power and your two alternators. So do make sure they're on. But they are on by default, so hopefully it's fine. We're then going to start the INS alignment. So um, the INS is an inertial navigation system, I believe. Um, it's basically this box here. And this needs to be aligned when we're on the ground. And this takes some time, so we want to get it started straight away. So we're going to set this little dial down here to ALN, which stands for Align. We are then going to move up and set this dial here on the actual box to LG. And we are going to click VAL to input the value. Uh, I don't quite 100% understand that but that's what you have to do, so bear with me. We're then gonna go down here back to the initial thing and set this to status on the right hand side. And you can now see we have a timer counting down on the INS. Uh, this is gonna count down from 240 ish 250, and that is the first stage of uh, alignment. And then there's gonna be another four stages where it's counting down from 75. So it takes a little bit of time. You do have to do it on the ground. I do believe, and we can find out now, um, oh, we can't find out now. I do believe there's a way you can actually ask the plane to skip this in uh, the settings. It's like a cheat mode or something. But for realism, I really like to do it. I think it's really cool. And you can see it counting down nice and slowly. We're also, whilst that is happening, this is not in the checklist. But it is very useful to do. If you pop down here, this is your radar panel. And what we're going to do is set radar to PCH which um, not sure what it stands for, again, probably French, but it basically means a radar is going to start warming up. So good thing to start doing, because it does take some time. Uh, another thing we're gonna do is this switch here. Uh, let me just zoom in again for you guys. We're gonna set this forward, and that is going to be the audio alarm, which is very useful. You click the switch up here to turn that off. If you've ever flown a jet in any simulator, you'll be very used to the audio alarm, so that is what that is. Um, I like to have it make sound because it's useful for me to know when it's on, but you don't have to. Okay, so to continue the startup procedure, we're going to come back down here to where the audio warning switch is. And this is the emergency hydraulic pump switch. We're going to switch that on. We are then going to head down here. This is the uh, ignition slash ventilation selector. And this wants to be set to R or G. G being gauche, R being droit, and meaning left and right. It doesn't matter which one, so just leave it as it is. Um, we are then going to set the fuel shut valve to open, which is this one here. Um, so open and guarded is what it wants to be. We have an annoying warning. Just turn that off and jump back down. So that was the fuel shut off valve, which we are going to open up. We are then going to turn the left and right low pressure fuel pumps on, which is here and here. We are then going to set the starter fuel pump on, which is here. And then we are going to open this switch. We right click, left click. Okay, yeah, so you left click just about there and it will open this switch and it will expose this button. This is the ignition button. This is how we start the plane. So we're gonna click that. And we're gonna look up here. And you can just see in front of me here, this is the engine RPM uh, in uh, percentage. When it hits 10%, which is almost immediately, we're gonna jump down to the throttle 
and we're going to move back to idle. Now I'm doing that on my actual, I have a physical throttle, but you can do that just by sliding this thing forward and moving it back as far as it will go, and it will hit that catch point. And you'll now see the RPM continue to go up. When this is approaching 60%, it normally hits around 58, 59%, and then it will start to go back down. We are gonna go and do some more stuff, but for now, we can just slowly keep an eye on this and make sure everything is progressing nicely. So we're gonna hit 50% there, 53, 54, and you'll see it start to go down now. What we're gonna do now is head back down here. We are gonna left click this, we're gonna left click this, and that is just turning the starter fuel pump off and closing the ignition switch orange cover, which is very important to do. And you'll now see if we look back up, everything's nice and stable. We're stable at 49%. Uh, uh, engine RPM, sorry. And we're good to go. So now we're going to head over to this middle console here. You can see a switch to the top left of this. We're going to right click that to turn our head up display on. And you'll see our head up display is now on. We are now going to head down to this switch here, just to the uh, bottom right of the panel, and switch our head down display on. Now you can see this P flashing. So this P is the radar which we set to warm up mode. It's very important that it warms up and it's a good thing to do on the ground so you're good to go when you're in the air. Last thing you want to do is be in a situation where you get into combat your radar is not warmed up. So we are warming that up at the same time as we're doing the INS alignment. You can see now we have counted down from the 260, 270 and we are now into 4 and 45. As this counts down, this will go down to 3, then 2, then 1. Then we'll be aligned and this prep thing will stop flashing. And then the INS is aligned. But anyway, let's keep going now through our checklist. Uh, next up is the radar altimeter it wants to be set to a marsh, which as we know means on, so we're going to click that and pop that up to marsh. The HSI mode is going to be set to nav, which is over here, so we can set that to nav. Don't quite understand that quite yet, I think that will change once the INS is aligned. Um, countermeasures, the countermeasures are our flares and our chaff, and if you guys don't know, um, these two things have different purposes. Flares are great for infrared missiles, so heat seekers, because obviously they generate a lot of heat. So you fire out a bunch of flares behind you, heat seeker hopefully targets onto them and saves you. Chaff is good for radar guided missiles. So you're like your AIM 120s, that kind of thing. And the chaff basically, huge amount of metallic particles, fires out, disrupts radar. So that's those two things. This does have uh, a system. So we are going to set countermeasure switch to manual, put that into the middle, and then you'll see a count here, which I think is 112 um, chaff and 14 flares, I believe. And we're gonna pop down over here and have a look at our electronic warfare panel, which uh, if we zoom in. Okay, so we are going to set uh, this thing here to veal, which is our, um, electronic warfare mode. Uh, Brulois, which is the jammer, should be on, which is M for Marsh. Uh, DA, which is Detector d'Alerte, or RWR, the radar warning, is on. Uh, the Detection to Depart de Missile, which is the missile launch IR detector, uh, should be on. And finally, the flare dispenser, which is the lance layer, so yellow here, should be set to marsh, which is on, which uh, doesn't seem to have a marsh setting, but uh, let's assume that that is on. I'm a little bit confused for that. Uh, I'm going to set that to SA and just assume that all is fine there. Okay. We're now going to do some tests of our autopilot settings. So we're going to um, very slowly, apparently, for some reason. I think some sort of zoomed out too far. We're going to head down here to this uh, bottom left panel. And we're going to test our autopilot. So we're going to flip this orange switch up here. Put this to M. And... Kill that, because that is a nightmare. And we're going to switch up to M and we're going to wait for this green light to switch on here. close that and guard it. We're going to open this, we're going to put this to C by right clicking it. And once again we are going to wait for this green light to go on. 
fantastic. And we are going to push it to L and we're going to wait for the green light to go on. Fantastic. Okay, we are approaching the end now, guys. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we are now going to make sure our pitot heat is switched on. This is the switch down here next to the audio warning and the emergency hydraulic switch. So we're going to put that forwards and guard it. We are going to release our parking brake, which is uh, zoom out a wee bit there. And you can see now all of our lights are off on our caution warning panel, which is fantastic news. The other thing you'll notice is uh, the P on the central panel here is no longer flashing. That means our radar is warmed up. So we're going to zoom back down to our radar panel. We're going to switch that to SIL, which is standby. You'll also notice that, as I said would happen, the uh, INS has counted down. Pret is lit up. So now we can head down to here. We can set this to nav set this to N for normal and our INS is now aligned which is fantastic news and that means there's one last thing to do here it's only a little thing um, this isn't mapped so I've got it set on my keyboard or you can press S but if you press it you'll see down here this little blue light here on well sorry on off on that is the dirav nose wheel steering when the blue light is on it means nose wheel steering is on this is used for taxiing so that is important for the next stage which is going to be in the next video so guys this was the startup tutorial for the mirage 2000c i hope you enjoyed it i hope it wasn't too boring and i hope it's useful for some of you guys who are maybe struggling to start up in a mirage so it was basically the standard checklist plus we did the radar and INS alignment um any questions as always leave me a comment down below guys thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it and you did find it helpful please leave a like please leave a comment and if you haven't i would love it if you subscribed thank you very much guys and i will see you all very soon fly safe